what if i told you that there are more reasons to use ethelfled now than there were this time last year would you believe me there have been two big changes to the meta in rise of kingdoms over the last few months and it's got me thinking a little bit more about ethelfled and how we can use her effectively going into 2023 because she's kind of the gift that just keeps giving and of course this is especially good news if you are a free to play player or a low spender and if you like guides for free to play players go ahead and drop a thumb up on the video that's gonna tell me that you want some more excuse me just give me a second it's actually 8 p.m and i promise this is not urine it's herbal tea with lemon and honey I'm still getting over that cold, but who cares about that? Let's talk about Ethel Flood. Now, have you guys noticed over the last few commander cycles, we haven't seen a commander that does a five target AOE. We look at CPO, great AOE. He only hits three targets. We look at Joan of Arc, her active skill, very powerful, only hits three targets. We can even go back to Honda. He only hits three targets. Bang Yu only hits three targets. We have Artemisia. We have Thutmose. We have Leonidas. We have Chuck, who's much newer expertise, hits only three targets and even Guan Yu only hits three targets so it's not even recent that the developers have sort of made this change and even with somebody like Harold who has a circular AoE he can still only hit three targets and yet we know that five target AoEs exist because Lee Song Ye has it and we also have it on somebody like Nebu we even have it on somebody like Mehmed who has a much smaller AoE cone and of course this brings us to Ethelfled who is one of the few commanders in the game who actually has a five target AoE we most commanders are single target or three target now that damage factor isn't crazy it's only 800 but another interesting thing about the aoe on ethel flood is that it's not reduced dependent on how many targets that you hit so if you look at somebody like isong for example he reduces the damage he's dealt 15 percent per target that he hits Ethelflaed does not have that same reduction. Now, with that being said, Esong is dealing so much more damage across the five targets that it's still a more powerful uh, skill shot. But regardless, Ethelflaed is in a unique position because not only is she dealing damage to the highest number of targets that is possible in the game, but she's also doing a really powerful debuff. And all this stuff you already knew, and this is nothing that has changed for ethel fled come 2023 of course she did get a museum buff which came uh, at the beginning of the year which is not specific to any troop type and that is also really interesting now i know what you're thinking omniarch who cares we already knew all this stuff well the reason that we're talking about this and the first thing that we have to talk about in this video is sargon okay sargon recently came into the game and a lot of people have been talking about him they've been talking about different pairings what's the best pairing for him and i think we've kind of come to the conclusion that sargon primary with C CPO secondary is probably the best pairing that you could do with Sargon because you want the AOE on there. You get a bunch of infantry health between the two commanders and they really just complement each other really, really well. But what if you don't want to split your CPO with your Guan? What if you want to keep that combination together, which I think is a completely fair argument because that combination is really, really good. A lot of players love it. There's so much synergy there. And so I think a lot of people are questioning like, okay, well, who would be another good pair for Sargon if we don't want to break that up? And this is kind of where where I started to think about Ethel Flood a little bit, okay? Because here's the thing with Sargon, he's a very powerful infantry commander, okay? He has the skill tree, he has the infantry tree. These are both very good trees to have. His damage over time is unfortunate that it ticks over five seconds, but it is a lot of damage. That's 2,500 damage factor if you can get all of this to pop off. But what's really unique about Sargon is that he essentially has the same debuff as Tamiris with her poison stacks, except this is inflicted upon skill damage of either commander in the army, which means, and we've discovered this already, that an AOE skill shot will apply this odd debuff to multiple targets in the open field. And that's one of the reasons why Sargon with CPO is so powerful. But if we take a closer look at Ethelfled, what we're going to find is that not only is her AOE hitting more targets than CPO and even Guan, for example, she's going to inflict up to five targets with the odd debuff, which is the most amount of targets that you could affect in a single turn. And on top of that, she's also applying a 30% reduction to their attack, defense, and health. Again, this is nothing new, but the fact that it synergizes so well with this really powerful debuff on Sargon 
is exceptionally interesting but here's the other thing there's more synergy between these two commanders than beats the eye well for one ethel is going to make sargon take 20 percent less counter attack damage so if people try to swarm him down this is going to help a little bit it might not be a game changer of course getting swarmed is pretty tragic in the open field but it's still really nice but on top of that she has the effect of her slowdown her expertise deals 20 percent increased damage to enemy troops when they're affected by slow and of course she has the 10 percent chance of doing this herself but the interesting thing about the infantry tree is that if you use a talent build like this for example you're going to actually get your hands on snare of thorns which gives you another 10 percent chance to reduce the target's march speed by 20 percent for the next two seconds now of course filling up the infantry tree does mean that you're going to miss out on some of the points like clarity and feral nature right so obviously that you are sacrificing that but going all in on the infantry talent tree isn't completely unreasonable and it's just interesting to note that it synergizes really well with this expertise on Ethelflaed because that's not something that you can say for the cavalry tree for example the cavalry tree has a ton of ways that you can speed up your own movement but there's no way to slow down a particular target and the same thing is true for example with the archer tree there's no way to slow the target on the archer tree so there's a really interesting synergy here between Ethelflaed and the infantry talent tree which Sargon happens to have and the other thing that you really want with Sargon is slowing your target you really want that because you want to hit them with this active skill ticks as much as possible you want the damage over time to hit as often as you can and if the enemy runs away that's going to be a big problem so not only do you have the chance of slowing down with the infantry tree but now you also have another way to slow down the target with the second skill on ethel flood which again is just going to maximize the amount of damage that you can deal with this active skill with Sargon all while hitting five targets with this odd debuff with Ethel Fled's AoE and once more I have to mention Ethel Fled's AoE is actually a half circle as you can see here I'm sure many of you know that obviously but what that means is that the probability that you hit a target with the odd debuff with Ethel Fled is higher than virtually any other skill damage commander now there's exceptions here obviously if you have circular AoE like with Herald or like with Isongye for example there's there's just a you know obviously a circle is the best possible thing that you could do but if you're not pairing her with a commander or if you're not pairing Sargon sorry with a commander that has circular AoE the next best best thing is a half circle AoE like Ethel Fled and I think it should go without saying that you would do Sargon primary here so you can hide your Ethel Fled behind him and you can also ignore this 20 percent increased attack you don't want to have mixed troops with Sargon you just want to go full infantry because you're going to go all the way up to the top of the infantry tree if this is going to be a pair that you do use so yes it is unfortunate that two of these skills will not be used at all in PvP but the main thing with this March again this is not really a damage over time March this is not a glass cannon March what this is is maximizing the spread of this odd debuff while having unique synergy with the slowdown effects and increased damage to slow down troops with Ethel Flood. And again, it's worth noting that the troop attack and march speed here on her relic is going to apply to the infantry in the army. So your infantry will just get 15% more attack and the march speed you really need. Again, there's this is great synergy. Sargon needs as much march speed as he can get because you want to stay connected to that target as the damage over time is going on now is ethel fled the best commander to pair with sargon no i i don't think so again half of these skills aren't doing anything but if you've had ethel fled on the bench and you're looking for a way to use her i think it's worth trying it's a relatively supportive march that's kind of concealed as something you might not want to hit right a lot of people are doing a ton of different things behind sargon right now it could be a Tariq behind it you could have you could have anything behind sargon at this point because so many people are testing it out and i think a lot of people might not suspect an ethel which could lead her to be in the open field longer to apply this massive debuff again it's only for two seconds but it's a massive debuff that's the same health reduction as CPO it's only for two seconds but it's also for defense and attack it's an insanely powerful debuff so to get her back in the open field is uh, is definitely unique and I think having you know having her pair with Sargon try it out I think it actually could be surprisingly useful for a supportive March that's still dealing decent damage and slowing everybody down now really quick before we move on because I know a lot of you are probably thinking this you're saying okay well if Ethel Fled's AoE is so good for spreading Sargon's odd debuff then why don't you just use Sargon primary Isong a secondary then you have an even more powerful damage factor it hits the same number of targets but it's circular and you get the 50% increased skill damage and I think that that makes sense right you do get a lot of benefits from that pairing and it's definitely 
going to deal more damage, obviously. And having this little rage engine here is also nice. But remember, we're not talking about just spreading the odd debuff. The difference between Isong A and Ethel Flood is that she also has that slowdown and the bonus damage during that slowdown as well, which synergizes with the slowdown on the infantry tree. On top of that, if we look at Isong A from a relic perspective, his relic only gives archers some stats and you get a little bit 3% more skill damage. So unfortunately, Isong A behind a Sargon is going to be a skill damage glass cannon who is literally providing zero stats to infantry. Whereas with Ethelflaed, she gives you the march speed from the relic, the 15% attack from the relic and also the 20 percent less counter attack damage is something that you're missing from Isong Ye. so yes again on paper Isong will spread the odd debuff better and deal more damage while they're at it but it's way more glass cannon and there's there's other things that don't synergize quite as well as ethel fled but of course if all you care about is glass glass cannon damage i mean you just throw Isong behind anybody and he'll do he'll do well i'm not trying to deny that fact I just think the synergy makes a little bit more sense with Ethel Fled and Sargon. Does that make sense? Now, the second reason you might want to consider dusting Ethel Fled off and picking her up off the bench is because of Joan of Arc Prime. Now, she is a very new commander in the game. And I think, again, if you have Joan of Arc and you want to use her in the open field, I think most people are using her with Nevsky now. And I think that is probably the best case scenario but it's worth noting that there's a really interesting case to be made here with Joan of Arc as well again Joan of Arc primary Ethel fled secondary and the reason that the synergy is so interesting and unique is because whenever the secondary commander so in this case Ethel fled fires her active skill there will be a 100 chance that Joan of Arc casts her sacred banner that's her own active skill and this is a very powerful active skill but what happens here is that Joan of Arc's super powerful 2000 damage factor AoE is going to hit the target during the two seconds that they have 30 percent reduced defense and 30 percent reduced health that's a very devastating debuff to have on you while you're getting hit with sacred banner from Joan of Arc Prime the more that I think about it that's probably the best case scenario and the best alley-oop setup for the sacred banner hit again ethel flood applies that debuff aoe so th the three targets that you're hitting with sacred banner all have that debuff that was just applied by ethel flood now you probably won't still have this five percent damage bonus active from the first sacred banner but even still the fact that this is going to be hitting during such a powerful debuff window is really nice plus you know you want to slay people with two badass women you know you want to do it that's why we love Boudicca prime with our amnesia okay okay jokes aside having ethel flood behind Joan of Arc prime again will give you another way to slow down your targets you're going to be dealing more damage to those slowed down targets and imagine hitting a target with sacred banner when they're affected by slowdown so you deal 20 percent more damage it's an interesting Interesting combo okay again is it the best pair for Joan of Arc Prime absolutely not okay absolutely not but we're just talking about creative ways that we can bring Ethel fled back into the open field and I think Sargon and Joan of Arc Prime are both really new commanders that surprisingly have a good reason to give Ethel fled another chance and just to reiterate on this again when paired with Joan of Arc Prime she's gonna get 10% more March speed and 15% more attack for the Cavalry and that's the beauty of this relic is that it is not specific to a troop type whereas somebody like Minamoto for example it is specific to a troop type and so the relic on Ethel Fled is just it's good in that way anyway guys if you made it all the way to the end of this video hopefully you'll give a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it takes one second it's free and it pushes this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it of course if you made it to the end I hope you would consider subscribing that's also free and consider clicking the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video comment down below what your thoughts are on ethel fled going into 2023 do you think more people are gonna bring her out from uh from the shadows so that way they can slow down targets and and deal more damage with Sargon or do you think that her time is pretty much over she's good for earlier game and at this point she's kind of useless I'd love to hear from you guys in the comment section below with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace